Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. Um, in this video, I'm going to examine the current state of play with Brexit um, and how there's been a bizarre outburst by Lord Mandelson and he and Nigel Farage seems to have swapped sides in the debate. So Lord Mandelson um, has continued his call for Brexit to be halted um, and being uh, utterly undemocratic, as he always was. Um, he said that um, Brexiteers are um, nationalists who hate foreigners. Well, the first part is true to some extent. Some of the Romanians would call themselves nationalists. There's nothing wrong with being a nationalist up to a point, especially being a civic nationalist, not being an ethno-nationalist, because that shades into racism. And uh, Mandelson, in the 80s, or even the early 90s, told the Labour conference how he supported Irish nationalism. Now, it's a respectable position. It's one I don't happen to share. Um, I'm a British nationalist, by the way. But for me, that includes the whole of Ireland. I realise most of Ireland's the Republic. But this is slightly tangential. Um, anyhow, Mandels is a nationalist too. A European nationalist. Perhaps I could call him a hyper-nationalist, as I have no truck with secession, even though it's explicitly permitted by the Treaty of Lisbon, of which he was a vociferous supporter. So, saying that leave uh, voters remain, uh, sorry, hate, uh, hate foreigners, well, at the extreme end of um, the leave campaign, there were some people who felt like that, I'm afraid to say. Uh, not many, but there we are. But he tried to hire with their own brush, rather than engage with these substantive arguments. But anyway, the debate's over. The United Kingdom has voted to leave the European Union. That's it. Hurry up. Get on with it. It could have been done by now. So they've lost it. He's a sore loser. But even if what um, Lord Peter Mandelson said were true, even if every single Lee voter was a nationalist and did detest foreigners, so what? That's still the majority. They still voted to leave the European Union and it must still be done. There are all sorts of loads of people at the Remain side, particularly Lord Mandelson many uh, Labour extremists, many Conservatives. We're always being told in the old days by Labour that Conservatives were fascists and so on. Sir Oswald Mosley, the leader of the British Union for fascists, he was an ardent Europhile. Europe a nation was his mantra to the day he died in 1980. I'm not um, insinuating that most Europhiles are fascists, by the way. So it's a, the European Union is an issue that divides all political movements, whether you're a Liberal, a Socialist, uh, a conservative, a fascist, a communist, an environmentalist, whatever. Anyway, you will never meet someone who is more xenophile than me. Um, anyway, there are all sorts of reasons to leave the EU. The European Union has only got 5% of the world's population. There's trade to be done with the other 95% of the world. I realise the choice is not binary. Staying within the EU, one can still trade with non-EU member states. But the United Kingdom managed to get itself into the only trade bloc which has got a stagnant population and a largely stagnant economy when the other trade uh, zones are growing rapidly. Um, so it, it was uh, staggering to hear Lord Mandelson say that uh, um, uh, leaving, the United leaving the European Union without a deal would be better for the United Kingdom than go by the Chequers deal that Theresa May propounded. Um, so obviously, leaving without a deal that mustn't be so bad then. If his noble lordship thinks it's better than the Chequers plan, which is a, a very soft Brexit. And Nigel Farage has completely lost the plot, saying that staying within the European Union would be preferable to the Chequers deal, which is supposed to be a soft landing on Brexit. Anyway, the EU's been playing hardball, and I think um, they've won game, set and match against Theresa May. They push Theresa May, she gives ground, she gives ground, she gives ground. They've scented blood. So why wouldn't they? Um, I think the European Union, institutionally, seems to perceive this as a zero-sum game. Game. It could be better for the European Union, or it could be better for the United Kingdom, not both. Now, I don't view it that way. It doesn't have to be confrontational. It could be constructive. It could be good for both sides. But um, why, would they, why would they back down when stonewalling has worked for them? Very reasonable proposals about paths to citizenship for EU migrants already in the United Kingdom that they've rejected out of hand, absolutely not good enough. You can't have this and that. So leaving the single market uh, was willing to do that. David Cameron wrote to every household saying, if you vote to leave the EU, then we have to leave the single market. Fine, so be it. But willing to compromise because Brexit only won by quite a narrow majority. 
So we could stay in the single market and leave other areas if that were viable. Seems not to be viable as the European Union has absolutely excluded the possibility. So out. Um, we need to prepare for leaving without an agreement, partly because it might happen, but also to make that a realistic negotiating position to say the European Union, um, if you offer us a terrible deal, we'll just go. I would agree to a fairly bad deal. It's uh, not categorical. It's absolutely not black and white. We must have a perfect deal or no deal at all. Deals are never perfect. Um, so if it's acceptable, if it's tolerable, then I go for it. The moment doesn't seem to be tolerable. Um, so yeah, there would be repercussions to leaving without an agreement. There'd be negative consequences to signing up to a bad agreement. And people have said, oh, the army's going to have to deliver food if it really comes to it. We're always hearing people in the United Kingdom eat too much, so we shouldn't be too worried about that. Sourcing medicines. Well, the United Kingdom's got quite a big pharmaceutical industry. And no, I don't know where all the medicines are produced. And I don't know if the UK can make all the medicines it needs. So uh, there are many countries outside the EU from which to buy these. And it's yet another example of how grossly irresponsible David Cameron was by not having a, a contingency plan drawn up for this, for the possibility the UK would vote to leave the European Union. And he completely abused the civil service. It was scandalous, just like Blair did as well, using such a flagrantly partisan manner and misusing public money to send propaganda uh, to households to uh, agitate for a Remain vote. Um, so this is yet another example of the grossly unfair behaviour by the Remain campaign, the many lies they told. Um, and I wish it were illegal what they did. Surely it should be misusing public money for a partisan purpose. Um, anyway, so uh, things are not looking good for Theresa May. I think her days are numbered. So the Brexit is supposed to be completed in March 2019. She might not last much longer than that. I reckon she'll last to the end of 2019. But there are no Mayites. Her standing has fallen in the polls. Depends just how difficult Brexit is, especially in the early few months. She may have had enough. Nobody's enthusiastic about her anymore. But who else? Who's the alternative? I think Gove is regarded as a silky tove. Um, uh, anyway, whereas uh, Bojo is seen as slippery. I think he's had his day. He's got very high negatives. 24% of the population approve of him. 66% disapprove. So he's got more of a following than any other Conservative MP. But he's got much higher negatives. Um, because, um, let's say, David Davis. I think nobody detests Davis. But again, I think he's a bit too old. But people could emerge. Sajid Javid, I think, would be quite credible as a Prime Minister. Um, so, but uh, I suppose the Conservatives are probably kicking themselves that Brexit's going so badly, partly because it takes the spotlight away from Labour. Was Labour is in such travails, constantly rallying over anti-Semitism. Now, Corbyn's shown a weakness for this, inviting uh, violently anti-Semitic groups, um, calling them friends and so on. Now, it's true that... Uh, Hamas and so on would say, oh, we're defending the Palestinians and the Israeli army has deliberately killed many Palestinian civilians, which again is true. Some of such claims are exaggerated. So he could say, well, Zionists are um, anti-Arab or um, anti-Muslim. And again, sometimes that claim would be voracious. There may yet be another leadership push. It seemed that um, Corbyn's uh, position was secured by their better than expected performance in the last general election. Don't overlook the fact he still lost the opposition's mission is not to lose narrowly, it's not to come second, it's to win, it's to be Prime Minister. He's had one shot at it and he blew it. Um, so uh, I think there may well be another coup in the Labour Party, not soon, probably next year. Maybe after Brexit, not wanting to queer the pitch, maybe wanting to exploit uh, difficulties when Brexit happened. If it really makes Labour's support go up when the contorries in the doldrums, perhaps it'll be safe for a while. But I think um, he will not lead Labour into the next Westminster general election, just like Theresa May would. She might stand down just before the next parliamentary election, if she makes it that far, hands over to a more popular leader. She will have had enough. I don't think she has been power crazed. They say she cares deeply about policy, but not terribly ideological. What's Theresa May's legacy going to be? Perhaps managing Brexit fairly well. That's the best that can be hoped for. Manager of the shop. She's a managerial character. Well... As manageress, the economy is growing slowly. Um, that's about it. And why are these these economic difficulties? Partly because of the likes of Lord Mandelson, 
um, these doomsayers are talking the United Kingdom down. That's bad for the feel-good factor for the economy. Um, so there, some of these people are ultra Remainers, and they're doing the European Union's work for it, trying to sabotage Brexit, trying to have a second referendum. They don't expect the result by hook or by crook, trying to stop Brexit in whatever they can, no matter how grossly underhand. Um, and being very partisan about this, it should be a cross-party issue. And again, well, May should have taken Corbyn in on Privy Council terms and the Lib Dems and tried to thrash out some sort of a consensus. I know the Lib Dems are uh, remain, but they could maybe agree to some movement, some negotiating positions. No. So Theresa May has been foolish on that one. Um, so there are quite a few headwinds for the government. Storm clouds include the, an economic slowdown, some high profile crimes and crime rising generally, partly due to police cuts. But actually, if they simply had the police doing less paperwork and more actual crime fighting, then crime could be tackled. Um, the NHS, people are um, moaning about that. Looks like there may be a shortage of physician and physicians and nurses and not enough people from the European Union coming to do these jobs. I've said in other videos my attitude, how we could do that and say, if you come from the European Union after Brexit, if you want to work as a doctor or a nurse or other shortage professions like a teacher, you can come without signing a single form and bring your spouse and children with you. Um, but only to work in those sectors. Others have to get um, visas. That would be my view. Um, and uh, coming on to Northern Ireland politics, the leader, Mary Lou Macdonald, said that she, she didn't want an immediate forward poll. She's pushing back because she knows that she would lose. So she's hoping Brexit goes very badly because that would give a fillip to the nationalist cause. Uh, could she call them nationalists? Well, they're European nationalists, they're not Irish nationalists. Um, and she instantly backtracked and said she wanted this instant. It was very unconvincing. She's not been tub thumping on that one. I suppose she's just resorting to uh, Sinn Féin's standard mantra. Um, but uh, many Remainers say, oh, 50% wasn't enough for this. Should have been in 60%. They should have built that rule in beforehand. Only if 60% vote leave, then we actually leave. Does this apply to the Northern Ireland situation? I don't think so. They, no one's ever suggested it for them. I remember Wales, the Welsh devolution referendum in 1997. On a 50% turnout, 50 point something percent of people voted um, for devolution. It was the narrowest possible margin, yet still it was implemented, and there was hardly any quibbling about that. So, But it's not good enough for the United Kingdom as a whole for some reason. It shows you just how underhand and hypocritical so many remainers are.